It is spring, isn't it? Isn't that great? Yeah, this time of growth and, and everything budding and the colors and, you know, um, the green, really green leaves. Have y'all started to notice the really green, green, green? Not just green, but the green, green, green leaves? Anyway, yeah, it's just that time of the year. And, and this is a great uh, time for us to continue to uh, focus on and talk about um, I have a spot I have to be on. And uh, talk about the six steps to paint a new picture. So we are in the sixth week, which means we're wrapping up the six steps. We're not done yet, though, so I really want to invite you um, to take everything that we've been talking about for six weeks and, and come and participate either here in the sanctuary and or, if you can bi-locate, you can do both. Online, right, for next Sunday, which is Easter Sunday, Paint a New Picture of Humanity. And uh, the last week of the month, we're going to celebrate Earth Day and Mother Earth. And I'm going to be speaking with a special guest, and we're going to launch into some new things that we're going to share how our community is launching into really great things. It's actually called a force for good, so you don't want to miss either one of those, okay? So the sixth step. Our life as a masterpiece, and um, that's what we're talking about this morning, is our life is actually already a masterpiece. It's a masterpiece. It's a one of a kind, because you are a masterpiece. You always have been. The mere fact that you're here and you think about this through all of the eons, all of eternity, all of the billions of years, this is the one and only time spirit life expressing as you is going to show up. So you're a one of a kind masterpiece, which means you're worth a lot. Yes, because those one of a kind masterpieces are worth a lot, aren't they? You know, they sell them and it just big dollars and put them in museums and these works of art. It, it, it shows how significantly worthy and worthwhile the art masterpieces are. Like this one is a one of a kind masterpiece that this community created together. And it was the unique masterpieces that helped to create the masterpiece. And thanks to Carl Thomas and setting that up last year, yes? And so we get to continue to enjoy this masterpiece. And so you are unique and precious. And I just want you to soak that up. I invite you not to deflect it, right? And that the vision that you have for your life is also unique, it's valuable, it's beautiful, and you're the only one in all of creation, in all eternity, that is bringing that vision of your life forward as you hold it. So the next thing that I want to talk about in this um, this, our life as a masterpiece is that you are the artist of your life, okay? You are the artist of your life. They're tied together. <laughs> Do not give someone else the paintbrush. Take it back if you've already done that. Say, I want my paintbrush back. I am the artist of my life. I am creating, the big I is creating this masterpiece. How many times do we just go, well, what do you want me to do? What is the vision you think I ought to do for my life? Well, you know, I have these choices and I don't know which one. And, I, you know, I, 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 um, I can speak from personal experience. When, right before I was going into college, um, 
you know, I, I, I had applied to a lot of colleges, and I was accepted to all of them, primarily Tennessee universities where I'd grown up. I was born in Florida, so, and my parents got degrees from both states and both universities, so I applied to those two. I had someone say, well, if you go to a Tennessee school, I'll pay your way, but if you go to a Florida school, I won't. You know, there was all kinds of dynamics going on. And I ended up going to the um, Memphis State University, which is now affectionately called uh, University of Memphis. And, and so I was thinking about, well, what do I want to study? And I was exploring, and I had thought about being a teacher like my parents. I had thought about being a doctor because I wanted to be in service to people. And my dad said, you know what, Karen, you love people. You'd be great with people. I think you ought to go into sales. He had the brush. And I said, sounds great. I declared my major marketing with the concentration in sales from the get-go. Didn't explore through any classes. I gave him the brush. And Petra, you know, now is going, I really wish your dad hadn't done that because I also had a dream of, like, photography and stuff like that. But the point is, and I had a very successful 23-year career, don't get me wrong and stressful. That was from the peanut gallery. <laughs> but I did take back the paintbrush and said, well, I want to be in service. I love people. I love community. I love to inspire people and have them go further than they think they can go. I'm going to take it back and I'm going to be a spiritual leader. So it doesn't matter if we've given this brush away I invite you to take it back. If you haven't given it away, hold on to it, baby. Don't let go. We are the artist of our own lives. And so then it's also, and how much responsibility are we each taking for that? It's important to ask ourselves that question sometimes. You know, it's a paradox. I want responsibility for my life, and I don't. So we each can take responsibility for our lives because we have control of one thing, and only perhaps one thing, the power of our own thoughts, and the thoughts that we have and hold, and we can train and practice with our own mind. So we have the power of choice. We have the power of choice. And I'm adapting this from a quote from Ernest Holmes that basically says, the power of choice with which we have been endowed is either our greatest blessing or our greatest curse. Properly understood, he'll tell us, it can lift us to the heights Misunderstood, it can drag us to the depths. And we are ch free to choose anything we want, asterisk, as long as it harms no one or nothing. But we must accept the responsibility of our choices because inexorable law will create our experiences according to our choices. So the universal law creates according to our choices. And he tells us that the responsibility of setting the law in motion is ours. I want you to hear this. In fact, I was so grateful that I got to listen to Dr. Petra's Science of Mind class this morning because it was really brilliant. And I was like, wow, I'm going to be speaking on just a titch of that, right? So it was a great add-on. So if you weren't with us this morning at the Science of Mind class, make sure you watch this later, right? But so the responsibility of setting the law in motion is ours. Okay? I want you to know that. I want you to get that. And he says, but the responsibility of making it work is inherent in its own nature. It's not our responsibility to make it work, it's the laws. 
which takes a lot of things, but I have to set it in motion. That's my responsibility, right? So another thing that's really important in creating our masterpiece is creating a masterpiece and to know that it's a joy, not a dirge or a drudgery. It's a joy that creating this picture actually can be a joy. Co-creation doesn't have to be hard. It's an expression. And so the other thing is to realize that to be more joyful in the process of creating your masterpiece is to be okay, that it's okay to want to have joy and to want to create your own masterpiece because there's no such thing as private good. There's no such thing as private good. When we paint our own picture joyfully, our life is a masterpiece. We are expressing and we are contributing, and it's ours to contribute, but we are contributing to the whole of it. So there's no such thing as private joy. It doesn't steal anybody else's joy. So all of our masterpieces, as we create them, with joy creates one really big tapestry, just like all of the individualized expressions in that parking lot last year. If you were here, you know that, you know, we put our own little drop, our own little blop, our own little bloop, our own little whatever. Mine is right there, I just want you to know. <laughs> right? And, and by the way, what y'all don't know is it, it took several, several days for it to dry and Carl said now, you know, you need to leave it in one place and let it dry. And, and it was on a table upstairs in our conference room and I thought for sure it was dry and I wanted to make a little video. And um, so I thought, wow, why don't I just set this up and that'll be my pretty backdrop to make me a little video that week. It wasn't quite dry, so it did this little blob. I feel it, it's right there. It's the other way, it was the other way at the time and it made this little blob bump. And I thought, oh my God, he's gonna kill me and it was a mistake. But you know what? I love this in this masterpiece. This picture would not be this masterpiece without that. So I invite us to remember and all of our masterpieces make up a tapestry and it does shift and it does change its shape. And sometimes there's a blob and a bloop in the middle, and that's okay. And this is the experience of the whole of humanity. What if some of these bleeps and these bloops and these blobs and the things that are so painful in humanity are the only way that we could create the masterpiece that is being created? That one day we get to go, wow, look at that. Humanity got it right, finally, right? So I'm inviting like this joy-filled accumulation. And there's joy in the journey, right? And so in the process of becoming and this joy of painting our own masterpiece, it's not about getting to something so I can stand back and go, it's done. Look at that. Whew, thank goodness. So I can go, man, look at that. To say it's done. No, we can, we're so destination oriented sometimes. Or maybe it's just me. But what if we were to know that this, this whole process is where we put the ING in painting. It's the journey and to not miss those moments of the journey that living it as we paint is actually the masterpiece, not the end result. Because I don't know about y'all, I think if I'm in the end result, my body's gone, dropped and I'm D-E-A-D dead. 
not ever dead, but you know what I mean, this expression, right? And so the joy is in the journey. Ernest Holmes tells us that we must become artists in living. To live by inspiration means to sense the divine touch in everything, to enter into the spirit of things, to enter into the joy of living. And I wanna, I wanna speak to the parents especially. And I'm, I'm just, I feel so great that I get to have some semblance of this as a grandmother for the past two years. Think about growing a child. And if you've never been a parent, you may have a pet. So if it started as a puppy or a kitty or a little birdie or whatever, right? Growing something that you love. Maybe it's a garden or a home project, right? Think of the journey to be with each moment instead of, well, I can't wait to he or she is 25 and they're out of my hair and they're out on their own. These moments, I've realized this now, it's helped me in the entirety of my life to soak up every moment that I have this past two years. Don't miss it. It's the journey of growing a child. Don't just sit back at 20 and go, yep, there it is. Um, whew, I, I helped paint that masterpiece, right? So I had a joy uh, in the journey of 10 years it took to become an ordained minister. 10 years. From the first foundational class and those classes to classes to become a licensed practitioner, a licensed spiritual coach, and I didn't want to miss that because I was like, well, if I just, I have to become a practitioner first in order to become a minister, I would have missed that, right? And then decided to go into ministerial school and get a master's degree in consciousness studies, and, but every class, every paper, every day to have the joy in that journey. And then, y'all know for sure, because you've been around me for eight years, once I was ordained, didn't mean that I was finished. Goodness knows, I still have growing and practicing and, and things to learn and be, right? And so that brings us to the last one. Painting a masterpiece takes time. It takes a little time. And when you paint a new picture of your life, it's not necessarily an instant manifestation, is it? Is it? Well, we each have to work it and rework it. And well, I don't know about that. Put an extra little layer on it, or maybe I need to put some paint over that right there, right? And to continually let it emerge. Let it emerge, whether it's attracting the perfect job or, you know, the masterpiece of your life as a whole, let it emerge. It doesn't happen overnight. And allow the vision of your masterpiece, allow the vision to pull you into the canvas more. Make adjustments, rework it. Try something new. Maybe it's a paint color you never thought you would, or a different brush, a different stroke. And then five, 10 years later, whatever it is, yes, you get to enjoy, wow, this is really taking place. This is the life as me masterpiece. So we're gonna do something together to wrap this up and make a collective masterpiece of all of our individualized expressions and bring them into a tapestry together of this community, both in the sanctuary and online. So I'm gonna ask Petra to come up and we're gonna have this beautiful ritual as we create a masterpiece of our life. Absolutely, thank you so much. Yeah, so 
Um, I loved what Karen said, it takes time, right? And if you've been on this journey, as we've been on this journey together for the last six weeks, I am thinking that you've probably just tiptoed into the vision that you are wanting to create. Remember, this is out of our sacred disruption, reimagine everything. Our lives are, have been so disrupted and we don't want them to just unconsciously fall back into the old shape. And so we've been working on this collectively for six weeks and this a beautiful arch the ritual team had uh, designed and developed for our burning bowl, um, which we usually do on January 1st. And so we've been systematically throughout our program, we've been actually doing our burning bowl ritual and we are completing it today. It seems uh, particularly important and appropriate to underscore what Karen said next week, Easter, we're talking about painting a new picture for humanity. Um, and as Chantel said earlier, um, we certainly do need one, uh, given the issues of war in the Ukraine and around the world, um, the challenges of climate change, which we are going to be talking about on Earth Day, paint a new picture of our relationship to the Earth. Um, and the idea that our good is always intertwined with the good of the whole. We cannot um, have private good because our good does in fact create the masterpiece of humanity and how we live together on the planet. I think the heartbreak of watching some of the um, reports, especially this most recent one out of Ukraine um, with the train station um, having been blown up um, and each time that we see um, a person of color who's lost their life in an inappropriate interchange with the police or all the ways in which climate change is disrupting people, um, what we see is what we feel in our hearts is we feel the loss of that individual masterpiece. And when there is a lot of that happening, it feels like whole portions of our tapestry are being damaged and wiped out. And so we want to lend our consciousness and our intention to that. So you have received a prayer flag. This is your prayer flag. And in a moment, we are going to take a little bit of time to reflect. So I'm going to ask you not to do anything about it for a moment. I'm just going to tell you a little bit about what's going to happen. Um, for those of you online, we're going to ask you to participate by responding to the instructions in the chat. Our ritual team that has put this together, they have prayer flags for you. And what you put in the chat, they're going to be writing on a prayer flag for you. So I'm gonna, uh, when we get to that point, um, you're going to write on one side of your prayer flag, you're gonna write something about the, pic the new picture you've been painting in your life. Um, financial freedom, perfect health, um, you know, deeper experience of the, the one, whatever you've been working on over these last six weeks, or the thing that you really want to express in 2022, this new vision of your life out of the sacred disruption that we've been experiencing. You have a crayon, it works really well on the cloth. You're going to write on one side what that is about. On the other side, because there's no private good, we want you to write something about the masterpiece of, of humanity. Spirit does dwell within all of us. That just doesn't mean all of those who are in this room or who are online with us. That, that means all of us and all of creation. And so we're gonna have an opportunity for, um, to write on this backside the vision that we have that we would like to paint a new picture for all of us together. So it doesn't have to be more than a couple words, but you can certainly write a whole sentence if you choose. Again, I'm gonna remind the people online that as we're thinking about this, when you come to something that you're gonna write in the chat, please write both of them at the same time, your individual words 
and your words for, the, for humanity so that when our ritual team picks it up out of the chat, they know those two go together and they go on the same strip. So I'm going to invite you to go within for a moment. Just take a breath. We've been talking about paint a new picture. And now we're going to joyfully, collectively create a tapestry. Just allow those words to come to your mind that would capture the essence of the new picture that you're painting for your life. Allow the words that would capture the essence of the new picture that you're painting for humanity to come to your life, to come to your mind. And as they come to your mind, I'm just going to invite you to take a moment and to write whatever it is that you want to write on your prayer flag, which you are going to hang onto this prayer flag altar in just a moment. Remember, those of you who are online, please write it in the chat. While everybody's busily writing, while everybody's writing, So I'm just going to let those of you know who are watching this video, not this Sunday morning, that this arch is going to be in our fellowship Panky Hall all year. That at any time you can come on campus, these prayer flags will be available. And we want you to add your prayer flag to our arch. We will be growing it all year. If you are never on campus and you watch this video any time in 2022, we invite you to send an email to info at csldallas.org with the words that you want to have on your prayer flag. And we will make sure that they get written and then they get added. Because as Karen said, it takes a long time to create a masterpiece. And we want to consistently be a part, be on the journey together of creating this masterpiece of our own lives, of the life of humanity and the life of our planet. So if you have friends and family who are not able to be here today, or perhaps who don't watch us online, and you would like them to add their prayer flag Please bring them or just bring their words. You will find this in Panky Hall all year. That we can continue contributing our intention, our heart, our mind, our presence, our belief, and our trust. That we can, in fact, paint new pictures out of any war, any disruption, anything that doesn't look or feel like the wholeness of the one that we know is the truth. Thank you. So when we're, uh, the ritual team is going to do their beautiful work of, um, of organizing how we are going to come up here to um, put this information on. We're gonna be chanting a beautiful chant, um, which is, a, which is uh, directly from words that Ernest Holmes um, writes often in his, um, 
in his writings that we have in the science of mind, um, written by Lisa Ferrero and Etika Luckett. And um, Lainey's at the piano. She's going to teach it to us. Before she starts, I'm going to let you know um, that um, Karen, and, Karen, come on up here. Karen and I are going to put ours on here first. And then our ritual team is actually going to come up here. And they're going to put on all of the everything that was in the chat. They're going to put for you online. They're going to put all of your prayers on first. So those of us in the room will wait. They're going to do that. And then they're going to come and release you um, as you can come up. And during this time, we'll be chanting this beautiful piece. The words, the words are, there's only one life. That life is God's life. That life is perfect. That life is my life now. There's only one life, that life is God's life, that life is perfect, that life is my life now. There's only one life, that life is God's life, that life is perfect, that life is my life now. There's only one life, that life is God's life, that life is perfect, that life is my life now. There's only one life, that life is God's life. That life is perfect, that life is my life now. There's only one life, that life is God's life. That life is perfect, that life is God's life now. There's only one life. That life is God's life, that life is perfect, that life is God's life now. There's only one life, that life is God's life, that life is perfect, that life is my life now. There's only one life, that life is God's life, that life is perfect. That life is my life now, there's only one life. That life is God's life, that life is perfect. That life is my life now, there's only one life. That life is God's life, that life is perfect. That life is my life now, there's only one life. Bye, Bye. 
that life is perfect that life is my life now there's only one life that life is god's life that life is perfect that life is my life now there's only one life that life is god's life that life is perfect that life is my life now there's only one life that life is god's life that life is perfect that life is my life now there's only one life that life is god's life that life is perfect that life is my life now there's only one masterpiece, isn't it? <laughs> this is what we do together. This is why we do it together. This is how your light adds to the masterpiece. Doesn't have to be perfect. Doesn't have to look like any other prayer altar, prayer flag altar that has ever been created in the history of the world. <laughs> right? It's ours. It's unique and precious, just like all of us. And we add this to all the prayers that have ever been prayed for the individual well-being of every human being of all of creation and for all the prayers that have ever been prayed for humanity. Because we believe that speaking our word, painting a new picture, does in fact make a difference. So, go out and paint the stars. We love you so much. <laughs>